Hi everyone! In this video, we are going to melt sugar and salt in order to determine its melting point. Let's start! These are the materials that we are going to use in this video. Frying pan and a butane stove or you can also use a gas burner. Salt and lastly is the sugar. Now let's start by pouring the sugar into the frying pan and turning on the butane stove in a medium heat. Let's wait for the magic to happen. There you can see the transformation of the sugar that is caused by the heat from a solid state to a liquid state, which is what we call melting. Now let's do the salt. So first, let's pour it in the pan and heat the pan in a medium heat. Now, let's see the reaction of the salt to the heat. Will it stay in its state or will it transform in a liquid state? What do you guys think? As you can see in the video, salt did not turn into a liquid or did not easily melt. Because salt is a crystalline mineral and like other minerals, it has a very high melting point. Its melting point reaches up to 800.8 degrees Celsius or 1473.4 degrees Fahrenheit. That's too high, and it is said that at this point, salt turns into a liquid. Here's the result, and it shows us that salt has a higher melting point than the sugar. We are done performing the melting of sugar and salt. Now let us proceed to showing you the molecular formulas of the sucrose, which is the sugar and sodium chloride for the salt. Shown above are the molecular formula of sugar and the table salt. Now taking a look at these molecules, the red and blue indicates the sharing of electron pairs between molecules and it has weaker bonds while the other one indicates the transfer of one or more electrons between molecules and it has stronger bonds. Are the atoms familiar to you? Let's go back to the molecular formula of the sodium chloride and the sucrose. Now, in the sucrose molecular formula, it indicates the sharing of electron pairs between atoms because it has hydrogen bonds and it is a weaker bond, while the other one for the sodium chloride, it indicates the transfer of one or more electrons between the atoms, and it has a stronger bond. These bonds affect the melting point of the sugar and the salt, and it introduces us to the ionic and covalent compounds. So what are ionic and covalent compounds? When we say ionic compounds, those are compounds that is made up of ions that form charged particles when an atom gains or loses electrons. And when we say covalent compounds, those are atoms who share one or more pairs of valence electrons. I have here a table of properties and the differences of ionic and covalent compounds. So for the bonding, ionic compounds tend to have stronger bonds than the covalent compounds. For the melting point, ionic compounds has a high melting point and is usually above 300 degrees Celsius. For the covalent compounds, it has a low melting point, usually below 300 degrees Celsius. For its softness or hardness, the ionic compounds tend to be hard, while the covalent compounds is softer and flexible. For the solubility in water, in ionic compounds, it is usually high, while in covalent compound, it ranges from high to low. While in electrical conductivity, ionic compounds are good conductor while covalent compounds are poor to non-conducting. So at this point, we can identify whether the sugar or the salt is an ionic or a covalent compound. Looking back, for the sugar, it has a low melting point, so it is a covalent compound. For the salt, it did not melt easily, so it is an ionic compound. 
So that is it for this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you for watching.